thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals, where it's always the hour for revival. I am your brother in the Lord, Brother HR, and it's always the hour for revival. This is the 17th installment of Heart to Heart. Glory be to God in heaven. I am so excited about this message. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. But not as excited as I am about Wednesday's word. You ain't going to want to miss that, I guarantee you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Amen. If you got your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Luke, the 15th chapter, and verses 11 and 12. Amen. Father, I pray that your glory would go forth in this message, that the people would be healed, set free, and delivered by the power of your word. I pray that your glory would be made manifest upon this broadcast today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Justin, God bless you, my brother. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Bless God. So go ahead and go with me to Luke 15 and 11 through 12. And he said, Jesus did, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of my goods. The portion of my goods. The portion of goods that followed to me. And he divided unto them his living. He didn't give just one son his inheritance. He gave both sons his inheritance, and it's interesting. Well, glory, hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. It's interesting, actually, that the firstborn, the older brother, is the one that got more than the second son. The one who asked for his inheritance was supposed to get less than the one who didn't ask for his inheritance. So he gave the inheritance. And I asked the Lord, I said, I've never noticed that before, that it said both sons received the inheritance of their father while their father was still alive. Give me the portion of goods that falleth to me, he said. And he divided unto them his living. And according to the Bible, the son that was the firstborn got the double portion, and the secondborn got one-third of the double portion. Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. So here's something interesting. Is it the fact that he left his father not, because of the, not just because he wanted to leave, but because he felt shortchanged by his inheritance? That's a possibility that we got to look at. A lot of people leave the church. They leave their father's house because they feel shortchanged and they feel like they wouldn't treat it fair. But it's the way the law of the firstborn was set up. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody shout that's good preaching. Amen. Praise God. But I asked the Lord about that. I said... Why did you give a double portion? Uh, why did you give a portion to both of them when only one of them asked? And he said, because if I didn't give the portion to both sons, it would have been an unbalanced scale. It would have been an unequal scale. And God detests an unequal scale.
In verse 12 and 13, both sons received their birthright. Why? Because if, like I said, he wouldn't have done it that way, it would have been an unjust scale. Proverbs 11 and 1, God detests an unjust scale. He hates an unjust scale. He is a just God. So if the father would not have distributed the both to both of his sons their full inheritance, then it would have been unjust. But God rightfully divided the inheritance. And he gave it to both sons. That's why when the father is rejoicing that his son came back, he says, rejoice that your brother that was lost is now found. Rejoice that he's come home. And he said, you didn't throw a party for me or my friends. And he get, goes into this big tyrant and tantrum rate like a little two-year-old that needs his tail whipped. He goes off in a little tangent with God and says, well, you know, you never threw a party for me. And the father says, and I believe it's the 31st verse, he says, son, all that I have is yours. What do you mean? He said, you have the birthright. All you had to do was ask and it would be given to you. He said, everything that I have is yours. You have it. So why are you having a fit that you hadn't used it? A lot of people are blaming God for their blessing not coming when they're entitled to it, but they ain't claiming it. Good Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. That's a good word, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. They have it. It's been given to them by the death of Jesus and the resurrection. But a lot of people don't claim their birthright they don't use what they got. It's been given to them. And just unlike how the first one squandered his, they spiritually are squatting on theirs. The only difference between the two brothers, one squandered and one squatted. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. One squatted and one squandered. After a while, the son got up and left and went to a small, a foreign country. Check this out, y'all. Like I said, it was a balanced, just scale that the father had done. Even at the end of the age, hey, Sister White, God bless you. I love you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Even at the end of the age, when Christ has come back, there is a set of balances, a set of scales that are mentioned at the return of Jesus. At the time the Lord returns, and the angels are dispatched to the earth, the four angels of judgment, the four horsemen. One of the four horsemen of the apocalypse has a set of balances, a set of scales. And what is the father doing? He's doing what he said with the prodigal son. He's balancing the scales. Eternity is being weighed in the balance, life is being weighed in the balance. People are being weighed in the balance. He said, oh, Lord, have mercy. I'm shaking everything on he in heaven and earth that can be shaken. Wait a minute. When a balance is being used, a scale is being used as a shaking 
till it balances out. Lord have mercy. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. God is shaking the scales of eternity right now. Heaven and earth are being shaken as the balances are being weighed. Somebody needed to hear that. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. And just like many young children, the prodigal son fell away. They lingered for a while in the church. They stayed for a little while, but then they fell away. Then he got into ungodly living, the scripture says. He got to permitting. And remember, what you permit is what you participate in. First time we read about Lot leaving Abraham, he pitches his tent near the city of Sodom. Next, we see him living near the gate. Then we see him in the city of Sodom, and not only to add insult to injury, but his own family, some of his sons, have become homosexuals and have began to live in Sodom as a sodomite. And you know, a lot of people condemn the daughters of Lot for sleeping with their father because they say, oh, well, that was perverse. They thought the daughters, according to the book of Enoch, there would be a great fire that would destroy the earth. So when they saw this fire, they misinterpreted the word and they thought that the book of Enoch's prophecy had come to pass. And that's why they said, we are all that is left of our father's loins. Their mother was dead. Their brothers were gone. They were all that was left of their father's loins. And they said, let us go in and preserve a generation. They read the book of Enoch wrong. They thought Enoch's prophecy had been fulfilled. So they were trying to stay alive. They were trying to preserve their father's name. They had good intentions, but the wrong actions behind their intentions. Are you hearing what I'm preaching today? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Listen to me. The Bible says when the prodigal son came home, the father said, let's kill the fatted calf and eat it. The fatted calf was not just a celebration that the son was home and, the, and they were just throwing a big party. No, there was blood being sacrificed on the altar. There was blood because his wayward son had come home. It was a blood sacrifice of thanks to God for salvation of his son, for bringing his son back home and out of the hands of death. Verses 22 through 23 of Luke 15. Let's go deeper. Psalms 50 and 10, the Bible says, Our Father owns the cattle on a thousand hills. And you know what, honey? He don't eat hamburger meat. It's all for you. It's all for me. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. What does it mean? He's rich in mercy. Those cattle were there not just for wealth, which a lot of people like to preach about. It wasn't just for wealth. It was for grace. It was for mercy, a sacrifice. And God said, I'm rich in mercy. 
Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He's rich in mercy. He did the same for Adam and Eve, Genesis 3 and 21, because the Bible records that God made a coat out of animal skins and put it on Adam and Eve. Why? Because the fig leaves. Hey, Sister Cheryl, God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. The fig leaves were disconnected from the vine. And they knew, the Father knew, they really didn't pay attention to it. They were bringing a temporary covering to a permanent solution. And the Father knew that the time was coming when those fig leaves would fall off. So he had to make a greater covering than the one that they made for themselves. So God covered them with skin from an animal. And most likely, the rabbis agree it was a lamb. So he takes the skin of this lamb and he covers them. What did he do with the sheep? The, the sheep didn't walk around with no skin. The sheep died. The lamb would have been killed in the garden. God had to send blood. For that sin to be atoned. Remember the Bible said without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness of sin. So if God forgave them there had to be blood shed. And God took the blood. Let's say it was of a lamb. He killed the lamb in the garden. A symbolic gesture of the death of our Savior Jesus the Lamb of God. He shed its blood and then he covered them with the skin to hide their sin. Glory to God. To forgive their sin. He covered them with the blood of that animal by putting skin upon it. Listen to me now, y'all. Genesis 3.21 He made a coat and put it on them because God knew the time was coming when the fig leaves would fall off. Hear me now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Even when Israel was in straight rebellion against God, I said this yesterday, God wrote them not a dear John letter or a dear Jane letter or Joan. He wrote them a letter of love and he said, even though they were in direct rebellion, I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of good and not of evil. Thoughts to give you an expected end. Then you will go and call unto me, and you will hearken unto me, and I will answer you. When you seek me, you'll find me. When you seek for me with your whole heart. Are you hearing me? God could have said, boy, y'all had this coming. I'm going to beat y'all to y'all can't walk. He could have said that, but he didn't. He said, I love you. That, oh, hallelujah, Jesus. The word, I love you, will do one of two things. It will hurt you and heal you. It will do two things. It will hurt you and heal you because when it, God said, I love you to them, I, I've got plans for your life that are still good plans. It hurt them because they knew that they were in sin against God. It's like daddy looking at you and saying, son, I'm not going to spank you. I'm just going to tell you I love you, but I'm disappointed in you. That hurt worse than the spanking. You would have rather took a spanking than to hear your daddy say, I love you, but I'm disappointed that you didn't take my advice. Hey, Sister Angel, God bless you. Jeanette, Jason, God bless you. Thank you for sharing the video. Amen. Justin, God bless you. Christopher, God bless you. Amen. God afternoon, Sister White. Amen. Hallelujah. Sister Angel, God bless you. Amen.
They were going into captivity for 70 years. But God said, I love you. He wrote them an awesome, heartfelt, heart-to-heart -heart love letter. Jeremiah 29 and 11. Why? Because He is love. And guess what? When God the Father sent God the Son to the earth, and he was empowered with God the Holy Ghost. Listen to me what happened. Jesus became the living love letter of the Father. Oh God, hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. And that's the whole message of the prodigal son. That the Father loves you. It don't matter what you've done. How far you have wavered. If you'll just set it in your mind to get back to the Father. He'll take you back. Amen. Thank you Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you Jesus. Amen. Check this out now y'all. The prodigal son didn't come home because he repented. Repentance was a part of his speech, but how many people repent and don't even really mean what they're repenting of? Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. But he came back to the Father not because he was sorry, but because he ran out. A lot of you have run out of time and resources and money and friends. You've ran out. But God said, whatever the reason, if you'll just turn around and come to me and truly repent. Truly let me know you've missed the mark. I'll love you and I'll accept you back. I don't care, says the Lord, what the reason was that you went away. If you'll just come home, I'll accept you, says the Spirit of grace. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise the Lord. And God said to his servants, put a robe on his back, clothe him. He's spiritually naked. Put a ring on his finger. The identity, it was a signet ring. Put a ring on his finger, a robe on his back, and shoes on his feet. So not only did he clothe him and give him back his identity, he even changed his son's walk. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. I love you, Lord Jesus. Glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So look at this. He met his son at the gate. So the people could not ridicule him. Wherever you are in your life, you may have said a dirty word. You may have said a cuss word. You may have lied on your neighbor. You may have stolen money. I don't know what you've done, but let me tell you something right now. If you will call on the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. Sozo, completely lacking nothing. The Bible said that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in and are saved. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. I love you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Finally, if you'll pray this prayer with me. You said, I'm tired of running. I've ran out of time and money and everything. If you'll stop running away from him, but run to the arms of love, Jesus will forgive you. He'll wash you. He'll cleanse you. He'll fill you with his precious Holy Spirit. Pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I come to you a sinner. I'm tired of running, Lord. I'm tired of doing my own thing. I want to be clothed in your righteousness. Lord Jesus, wash me and cleanse me. Fill me with your precious Holy Spirit that I might make heaven my home in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Father, fill everybody watching with the Holy Ghost and fire. Lord, heal, deliver, fill by the power of your Holy Ghost, Lord God, with everybody watching, Lord. 
in Jesus' name. Even refill people with the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name, Father. Refresh, recall, renew, revive in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for tuning in to the 17th installment of Heart to Heart. I'm your brother in the Lord, Brother HR, and as always, the hour for revival. I love you. God bless. See you in the next meeting or in the air in heaven. Like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell notification on YouTube for more videos just like this. I love you. God bless. Bye-bye.